Well, morning, folks. It's Wednesday morning. Uh, we're here with Coffee with Job, and we are on to chapter thirty-four. And we are going to consider, possibly, well, in fact, it is. I think it's the biggest question in the book, and it's the most important question. And it's this: Is God fair? Now, I have to say that I was fairly comfortable with the book of Job, having studied it and looked at it and everything. And sometimes, you know, you don't change your mind. But Christopher Ashe's book has really made, my change, made me change my mind about Eli Hu. And I'm now convinced that Ashe is correct, that Eli Hu is really like a prophet to Job and is bringing God's word to him, even if at times his expressions are not great and there's a bit of arrogance. Uh, believe it or not, Sometimes there are good preachers who are a little bit like that. Um, and there are bad preachers who are like that as well. So, let me just read chapter 34, verse 1. Then Elihu said, Hear my words, you wise men. Listen to me, you men of learning. For as the ear tastes words, as the tongue tastes food, let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. Let us discern for ourselves what is right. Let us learn together what is good. What a great motto to have, let's say, at a Sunday service or at a Bible study. Let us discern what is right. Let us find out what is good. And I think that this is, I think Ash is correct, I think this is the, the, the critical area because Job's questioning has really been, is God fair? And you can understand him questioning that. But... Forgive me saying this, it's a hellish question. Because if God is not fair, then everything is, is just wrong. He addresses the wise men. He, they, they are the ones who know. They are the ones who are men of learning. And I think he's speaking to anyone who's willing to think about and consider these things. And he's asking them to think about the arguments. And a bit like he says food, you know, let's... Like you turn it over. Look at what look at what he says. For as the ear tastes word, for the ear tastes words as the tongue tastes food. The ear tastes words as the tongue tastes food. You know, may these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my God. And I hope you know when we're speaking, what you think of the power of words and your food. You know, like so. This is one piece of food I, I would struggle to do without, and that is cheese. But supposing you didn't know what it was. You would nibble it, you would taste it, you would go, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to go with this. The same with coffee or anything else. And my, what, what Eli Hugh is suggesting is we need to consider these words as we would food. And I think reflecting upon what we read, reflecting upon what we hear in sermons, sometimes I find that we're so dumbed down. I'm not, I'm not talking about being academic. We're so dumbed down in our sermons. There's very little to reflect on. But we really do need to reflect. And this, this biggest question of all is a huge one to reflect on. And he says, let's find out what's right. Let's find out what is good. The idea of rightness or justice is absolutely crucial to the book of Job and, and particularly to Eli Hughes' works. The idea of goodness is the idea of what is morally good. I was listening to uh, Tom Holland and Dominic Sandbrook discussing on The Rest is History, and they, Tom Holland makes this absolutely specific point that concepts of good and evil have no real meaning out with Christian understanding. And I think that is very, very, very important. He pointed out how the Greek go gods were neither good nor evil because they did good and evil things. Interesting, 2 Samuel 15, 3, Ash points out that Abraham says, see your claims are good and right. And so we are thinking about God's government of the world and we're thinking about whether we can be confident in the goodness of God. I, I think that's a doctrine that we've lost sight of. God is good and the giver of good. So I look at all the answers to prayer. I look at all the things going in the world. Is there anything within that that contradicts the goodness of God? And Elihu is right in saying to Job, your circumstances 
may be horrendous. But to claim that because of that, God is unjust, that's wrong. And so I, I, I think of it this way. I sometimes meet people who will say something like, I used to believe, but this happened or that occurred. And they'll then say, okay, I, you know, I no longer believe. And I would suggest that instead of starting with our experience, we need to start with the fact that God is good. So let me just give you one example. I had a friend at university um, and one time he came to see me and he was just absolutely, he was one of these guys who was constantly happy, constantly rejoicing in the Lord. And I said, how are you? And he said, oh, I'm miserable. And I said, oh, hallelujah, great. It's nice to know that you're normal. And he said, no, no, no. I said, why are you miserable? I'm sorry. I said, why are you miserable? And he said, well, God told me I was going to marry this girl. I said, yeah, and what's the problem? He said, well, she's marrying somebody else. And then he said these incredible words, God lied to me. And I had to sit down with him and talk to him and say, hang on a minute, you, you've, you're approaching this entirely the wrong way. What if you got it wrong? What if God didn't tell you? And changing that perspective actually really helps. I start from the position, God cannot lie, God cannot be unjust, God cannot be evil. And so the things that are evil, that are unjust, that are deceitful, that are wrong, they have to have that backdrop. I, I cannot sit in judgment upon God. And I think that's what Eli Hugh is saying. Is the God's government of the world right and just and good? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Do we always see that? No, we don't. But one day all things will be made clear. And for me, that is, it's not a psychological crutch, but it's something in which I can rest secure the goodness of the Lord. And if you're a believer, so can you. Well, God bless you and see you tomorrow uh, for another Coffee with Joel. Bye.